Senior Council has a, appointed a committee of graduating seniors to select this year's commencement speaker. It is my privilege to invite a senior, Ms. Emily Burke, to introduce this year's commencement speaker. Thank you, President Lowe. Faculty, family, friends, and most of all, the graduates of the class of 2010, congratulations on all of your achievements and welcome to your commencement ceremony. On behalf of the commencement speaker selection committee, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our commencement speaker, someone who shares his thoughts and words of advice as we embark on our new journey. Since being established as a public institution, the University of Maryland has inspired students to make a difference in the community and the world. This characteristic is shared by tonight's commencement speaker. Mr. Craig Thompson was sitting in a seat like yours when he graduated from the University of Maryland. He is now a partner in one of the country's top law firms. A native of Baltimore, Mr. Thompson is a member of the University of Maryland College Park Foundation Board of Trustees and he ho also hosts a weekly public affairs talk show. Among Mr. Thompson's many honors and awards, he received WNUV Channel 54's Proud and Positive Award and was named one of the most influential people in the state of Maryland. Mr. Thompson remembers reading Dr. Seuss's Horton Hatches the Egg as one of the first books he read as a child. After he and his wife became parents, Mr. Thompson decided to write and publish his own works for children. The ABCs of Black History, a children's guide, is in its third printing, and the ABCs of Black Inventors was published last year. Public service has always been an important aspect of Mr. Thompson's life. As a prolific writer and speaker, Mr. Thompson contributes to the community in many ways. He serves on community boards, works with the Baltimore City Public Schools, conducts educational seminars around the country, and mentors young people. Please join me in extending a warm welcome to tonight's commencement speaker, a lawyer, educator, author, and public servant, Mr. Craig Thompson. Somebody said that it couldn't be done, but they with a chuckle replied, then maybe it couldn't, but they would be ones who wouldn't say so till they tried. So they buckled right in with a trace of a grin on their faces. If they worried, they hit it. They started to sing as they tackled the thing that couldn't be done, and they did it. Now, Dr. Lowe, somebody scoffed, oh, you'll never do that. At least no one ever has done it. But they picked up their pens, and they picked up their books, and the next thing you know, they've begun it. With a lift of their chins and a bit of a grin, without any worry or quit it, they started to sing as they tackled the thing that couldn't be done, and they did it. There are thousands who tell you it cannot be done. There are thousands to prophesy failure. There are thousands to point out to you one by one the dangers that wait to assail you. But just lift up your chins with a bit of a grin. Just take off your coat and go to it. And you'll start to sing as you tackle the thing that couldn't be done. And you'll do it. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> Dr. Lowe, distinguished platform guest, faculty, staff, Friends, family, uh, people standing against the walls, and most important, to the class of 2K10! Good evening. This is a very exciting time. I'm, a, I'm very excited to be here. Let, let's do this. Everyone around the Comcast Center, let's stand up and give the class of 2010 a big round of applause. no shout outs. This is an extremely important time in your lives. And I'm extremely excited to be here to join you in this ceremony. When I, when I received the phone call several weeks ago uh, and, and asked to join you, uh, the, I, 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 the caller said, well, Craig, you're a lawyer. 
I said, I am. And clearly, as a lawyer, uh, you believe and understand the tenets of free speech. I said, of course, I believe in free speech. And they said, well, good, because the students want you to give one <laughs> on December 18th. And when they told me what it was for, I said, of course, of course. And as a lawyer, I get a chance to travel around uh, not only for cases that I handle, but also uh, to give lectures. And several uh, uh, weeks ago, I happened to take a trip uh, to Atlanta. Not a, not a long trip, but it's a, a trip that gave me a chance to write while I was on the plane. And I had the window seat. And the person who was sitting next to me in the middle seat was from uh, England, had a very strong accent. The person who was sitting next to him was from Germany and spoke three distinct languages, spoke German, spoke Spanish, and spoke English. And when people fly, there, there are some people who need sedatives. And some people take pills, some people uh, take drops. And when the flight attendant came through and asked if anyone needed a sedative, the person sitting next to me said, yes, I'll have a Budweiser. <laughs> and in and, and class of uh, 2K10, I, I know that none of you know this, but uh, alcohol, has a way of bringing out the philosopher <laughs> in people. And it has a very uh, strange way of compelling you to ask extremely profound questions that you can't remember the next day. <laughs> and so after the second sedative that this gentleman had, he learned that the gentleman from Germany spoke three distinct languages. And so the sedative kicked in. And he said to him, you speak German? And he said, yes. And you speak Spanish? And he said, yes. And you speak English? And he said, yes. And then the sedative said, ask him this. What language do you think in? <laughs> and remember, I'm taking notes. I said, Woo, that was a good question. <laughs> and the gentleman from Germany looked at him and he said, It depends on where I am. I said, Woo, that was a good answer. <laughs> now, clearly, this uh, sedated man next to me didn't know that I would use. Uh, his words on December 18th during my free speech. <laughs> but class of 2010, my question to you is, what language do you think in? Not, not German, Spanish, English, or Greek, but what social language do you think in? What, what fundamental language do you think in for success? And as we move forward in this next phase in your lives, it's important to think in a new language. And I want to ask you to think of a language or in a language that encourages you to give, that encourages you to give. As Emily mentioned, I'm from uh, Baltimore, and uh, there are a lot, of, a lot of very interesting people where, where I'm from. And ba shout out to Baltimore. And. And, and, and as I was walking to, to work one day, a gentleman walked up to me and he said, excuse me, man, what's the best nation in the world? Now, I'm on my way to work, so I really don't have time to engage in games. But I said, of course, it's the United States. Nope. I said, well, um, the country in, in Africa? Nope. So now I'm thinking he's trying to be funny, so I'm going to try to be funny. And so I said, uh, Janet Jackson's Rhythm Nation? I don't <laughs> nope. Um, One Nation Under a Groove? I don't <laughs> nope. I said, look, man, I don't have time for this. I'm trying to get to work. I What's the best nation in the world? He said, donation. Can you spare 50 cents? <laughs> so, Dr. Favard, and just for his creativity, I uh, gave him just a little something. 
But what he said to me was so true. What's the best nation in the world? It's donation. It's what you give. It's what you offer. And as you move forward in, in this next phase of your lives, remember that it's about service. It's about what you offer to the world. As Emily mentioned, Deborah and I, who's my wife, we have three children. Delaney is six, Dana is four, and Carter, who is uh, the new one, is seven weeks old. Which means that, thank you, which means that I spend quite a bit of time in uh, Babies R Us and uh, Toys R Us and Spend All Your Money R Us and all these other places. And not too long ago, I, I, I happened to go to uh, Babies R Us and I saw this, this little boy and he was dancing. And it was so cute. And, and ba babies don't know m much about, you know, the, the electric slide and, and all that stuff. So they just sort of bounce. And I said, it was so cute because all I'm hearing is Demi Lovato and Hannah Montana. And I'm always in the, in the market for the hot baby songs. So as this little boy was dancing, I wanted to find out what it was that he was singing so that I could go and I could sing them to my children. I love baby songs. I'm past head, shoulders, knees, and toes. And so as I crept up behind him, just because I didn't want to startle him, I wanted to find out what this baby song was he was singing. And so I got up behind him and I heard, teach me how to Dougie, teach me, teach me how to Dougie. <laughs> Everybody love me. Everybody love me. <laughs> now, some of you may need to ask some of the class of 2010 about the Dougie. And it occurred to me that many of our young people are exposed to things that are creating different images, different perceptions, a different worldview in their minds. The class of 2010, you have an opportunity to give of yourselves and offer yourselves as wonderful models of possibility to our young people who are watching what you do. So I want you to think in terms of a language that will make you give. We live in a society and it's a very changing society, it's a changing society, one that just a few years ago, you could turn on the television and see uh, 20 beautiful women fighting for a date with Flavor Flav. <laughs> it's a society where you can go to a restaurant and order food that can cause high blood pressure and obesity and uh, cholesterol and when you order it, you say you want a Happy Meal. <laughs> I'll let that one sink in for just a moment. <laughs> it's a society where too many young people know more about Jay-Z than their ABCs. They know all about 50 cents but don't have 25 cents in their pocket. And grown men are bragging about the houses that they saw on MTV Cribs. And they still live at home with their mother. Now there is an issue when there are people like Manny Pacquiao and Bernard Hopkins and, and all these Oscar de la Hoya and others who get paid millions of dollars for trying to knock a man's brains out. But a teacher who's trying to put some brains in is having trouble paying the mortgage. That's a society that we are growing up in. And so our offer to you and our challenge to you is to give to serve the public so that the public will serve us well. We also want you to make sure that you think in a language that compels you to grapple, to grapple, to fight, to wrestle your way to success. This is a challenging time that we're living in, tough economic times and uh, tough social times. Tough times make tough people. The terrapin has a hard shell for a reason. There is a, a reason for you to be here at this moment. And as you move forward in your respective lives and careers, understand that the tough times will not create a, a hindrance, a barrier for you.
Challenging times are inevitable. And what you have to understand is that it's what's in you that will create the future. And now we are in a possibility, or we have the possibility to change for the better. There, there's some who say, well, it's, it's such a challenging time. What, what, what will I do? How can I make it? Let's give you some examples of those who face tough times. Walt Disney was fired by a newspaper editor who claimed that he lacked imagination and had no I good ideas. Madonna was fired uh, at Dunkin' Donuts for pouring uh, sauce on customers. And then she joined a band called The Breakfast Club. Now, The Breakfast Club lost their record deal, and she said, well, let me see what happens if I go solo. So she wrote Honda, was turned down by Toyota for a job as, a, as an engineer. And while he was jobless, he started making scooters in his garage. Some of his neighbors encouraged him to sell the scooters, and to this day, folks are even driving Hondas as we speak. J.K. Rowling was fired from her job as a secretary for daydreaming. And while she was poor with her children, she started writing her first Harry Potter novel on the backs of napkins. And she was turned down by over 15 publishers until the editor of Bloomberg took the manuscript home to his daughter for her to read. Steven Spielberg was rejected by the USC School of Theater, Film, and Television not once, not twice, but three times. Michael Jordan was cut from his high school basketball team. Winston Churchill and Abraham Lincoln lost just about every elected office they sought before becoming prime minister and president, respectively. Oprah Winfrey was fired from her first job as a TV report reporter because she was told that she was unfit for television. And Dr. Seuss, yes, even Dr. Seuss, was rejected by 27 different publishers before one agreed to print to think that I saw it on Mulberry Street. Tough times make tough people. Circumstances don't crush people. They reveal them. And the circumstances that are in, a, in our environment for you will reveal who you are. So think in a language that compels you to grapple, to fight, to claw, to scratch, to bum rush your way to success. And when you do that, you understand the power of persistence. Calvin Coolidge said it best, nothing takes the place of persistence. Talent will not. The world is full of talented people who are unsuccessful. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. It's time for all of us to understand that persistence and determination are omnipotent. I have a stack of, of rejection letters from various law schools that I keep in my trial bag just to keep me hungry. And I read them from time to time, and the language is quite flowery. But if any of these letters had formed my thoughts about my ability to practice law, if the words that these people heard uh, formed their thoughts about themselves, just think where we would be today. Just think where we will be in the future if you allow any person, any circumstance, any environment, any person, place, or thing to challenge you and change the way you perceive yourself. Think in a language of grappling. The Earth covers 196,940,400 square miles. There are almost 6.9 billion people on the face of the Earth. Over 309 million people in the United States alone. But only one Craig, only one Wallace, only one Danita, only one you, only one Wayne Mike McIntosh, only one you. And the universe is structured in such a way that each and every one of us has a destiny to fulfill. Our job is to do it and to never allow anything or anyone to change our mind. No one can chump us out of our destiny. So think in the language of grappling. And last, we want to make sure that we think in a language that encourages and compels us to go. There are 1,440 seconds in each day, minutes in each day. And what we have to understand is that each minute counts. And when you take the power of your mind to grow and to go, understand that there is no time but the present. 
And when you move forward, you have to do so now. This is not a dress rehearsal. This is a life that is moving right now. There is no tomorrow. Make sure that you go right now and fulfill your dreams. Your parents, your family, your friends, and our nation are waiting for each and every one of you to move forward and to go. Even if you live to be 150 years old, in the universal clock, each and every one of us is really only here for about a minute. And the poem says it best, I have only just a minute, 60 seconds in it, forced upon me, can't refuse it, didn't seek it, didn't choose it, but I know that I must use it. I will suffer if I lose it, pay account if I abuse it, just a tiny little minute, but eternity is in it. Class of 2010, repeat after me, I have only just a minute, 60 seconds in it, forced upon me, can't refuse it, didn't seek it, didn't choose it, but I know that I must use it. I will suffer if I lose it, pay account if I abuse it, just a tiny little minute, but eternity is in it. Now give yourselves a big round of applause for understanding the power of giving, of grappling, and of going. And when you understand that power, when you think in that language of giving, and when you think in that language of grappling, of fighting, of scratching and clawing to make sure that you succeed, and when you think in that language of going, making sure that you understand that time is now and you must maximize every single moment, our society, our world will be better. And so we bring you words of congratulations. And because the University of Maryland is a global community, I bring you words of congratulations from around the world. From my friends in Ghana, I say mo, wayadi. My friends in Greece, say sinkedetiria. My friends in Germany, say gluckwunsch. My friends in Korea, say chukamnida. My friends in Spain, say felicidades or felicitaciones, it depends on where you're from. My friends in Israel, say mazel tov. And my friends from Baltimore, say go ahead, y'all, represent, handle your business, get your swag on, and do your thing like it's supposed to be done. <laughs> Class of 2010, congratulations. You made your mark on Maryland. Now make your mark on the world. Mr. Thompson for that wonderfully motivational address. Um, on behalf of the graduating class, we would like to present you with this University of Maryland hat and shirt um, to remind you of this evening. <laughs>